à, đường link live ở trên đấy kìa Tức là hôm nay mình sẽ livestream trên cả Facebook và Youtube ạ. À? Hiện tại bây giờ là em đang livestream trên Youtube đấy ạ. À, và cái cái video này cũng sẽ được đưa vào Facebook. Amin mở hai máy cho để xem cái kia nó có bị làm sao trong trường hợp nó có vấn đề gì. Chờ ok. Anh Sơn ơi, em vừa để anh làm co-host đấy ạ. Ok, cảm ơn nha. Ừ. Anh Sơn có biết là lúc nào thầy Kajita vào không ạ? Cái này thì mình cũng không biết. <cười> Thế thầy đã thử uh, test máy hay là connection gì với anh chưa ạ? À, mình có reminder thầy về cái đấy. Có, có email rồi. Chắc là tí thầy vào. Vâng ạ. Ừ. Tài khoản Sơn Cao là của anh Sơn đúng không ạ? 
Đúng rồi, mình kiểm tra chế độ uh, attend đi với trong trường hợp có vấn đề gì thì mình có thể uh, chuyển qua cái máy khác cho dễ. À vâng, thế thì em chuyển anh xuống lại làm attend đi nhá. Ờ, uh, yeah. uh, uh-huh. Không, ok. À không, ý em nói là cái à. tài khoản kia ấy ạ. À uh, ok. Uh. Vâng. Không, lúc này mình chuyển xuống rồi. À thế ạ, em uh. không biết, em xin lỗi. Uh. Anh Sơn ơi, em xin phép uh, uh, share cái video giới thiệu hội thảo ạ. Ừ. Vâng ạ. Anh Sơn ơi, em xin phép uh, uh, share cái video giới thiệu hội thảo ạ. Ừ. Vâng ạ. Vietnamese Academic Network in Japan, Ovanje was founded in 2016, visioning a network where we can connect researchers and scientists to to the uh, uh, by strengthening the relationship. The technology network in Japan, the Japanese, was founded in 2016, visioning a network where we can connect researchers and scientists to the scientific to secure the safety and the health of all our participants. On behalf of the organizing committee, I would like to send our gratitude to all the great speakers that joined.
sorry sao mình không nghe gì hết trơn <cười> sorry em không nghe gì trơn Yeah, mình cũng không nghe thấy for Vietnam by a panel discussion entitled semiconductor in Vietnam what is the right direction we hope that you will have a productive and satisfying time at this session 1J20. Thank you very much. Session number one, Emerging Nanomaterials. This session will focus on the potential of the emerging nanomaterials by an interdisciplinary research, including superconductor, energy material, and spin electronics. Our goal is given... Ah, okay, Roy. Uh, yeah, okay, rồi. Uh, uh, materials. Uh, có thầy Kajita vào rồi. Uh, Microelectro mechanical system, MEMS, and Internet of Things, IoT. The topics for discussion in this session include MEMS sensors, MEMS energy harvesting devices for IoT, wireless communication technology for sensor network. Practical applications of MEMS devices in IoT, in healthcare, infrastructure in monitoring, environmental monitoring, smart city, act, and the future directions of MEMS and IoT. Session number three, very large scale integration circuit and applications. This session provides a forum for the very large scale integration circuit and application communities to share the experience and integrated circuit design and heterogeneous system integration for emerging IoT, biomedical, and 5G applications with emphasis on the research collaboration. Uh, good morning, Professor Takaki Kajita. Uh, can you hear us? Uh, yes, good morning. Ah, good morning. Uh, so we try to that uh, uh, slide sharing, for okay, example. Okay, I... let, let me try. Can you try to be full screen? Oh. Yeah, okay, so do you think it's working? I think it's working very well. Thank okay. you very much, yes. Good, good. Great, thank you. I think we have still have about 10 more minutes yeah. to start. So I, I remember you plan to go to... Hmm? I forgot, you have a... A lecture at the school. Is that cancelled or? Oh no no no. Uh, the lecture for the high school student was for yes uh, was yesterday in Okinawa. Ah uh, Okinawa. Uh, and you have to fly from Okinawa to Tokyo yesterday night. Right. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Good morning, Professor Kajita. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Well, it's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, good morning, uh, Professor Kajita and everyone. Uh, hi, Ayn. Yes. Uh, you want to say something? 
Uh, yes, I just want to say thank you to Professor Kajita. I'm the uh, conference chair of this one J uh, 2020 conference. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think that this is the first time you join the conference between like, Vietnamese and Japanese uh, yeah. Yeah, exchange meeting. So firstly, a warm welcome. And uh, we are very, really surprised when you uh, accept our invitation because we <laughs> try to reach out. <laughs> Actually, I, I saw you many times in uh, Neju Station. And, because I am currently working in, in uh, Todai. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> and uh, we have been uh, holding this kind of conference for many years, mm -hmm. uh, mainly for students before. But uh, recently, we have more and more Vietnamese researchers in Japan, in Todai specifically. So we want to promote this kind of uh, conference into a more professional conference in now and in the future. Mm -hmm. So the participant, uh, the, your uh, participant today is a very good start for us to maybe uh, taking this conference to a high level. Just, so I would, uh, would like to say thank you and uh, we enjoy your talk today very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, so I before going uh, to start, I can briefly mention that we, we have three sections today and we have the, your plenary talk. I didn't see Hong Wen joining yet. I'm trying to, to contact her. So I, I saw her chat this morning, but uh, at the moment she didn't join yet. So she will talk about the recent result from T2K experiment mm -hmm. and uh, our recent involvement in T2K experiment from Vietnam side. And then we also have Dr. Kai. Uh, he uh, worked on the candle experiment that is uh, for original lead double beta decay. Mm -hmm. So it's quite a bit technical talk. Uh, yeah. So uh, unfortunately, that I don't have a bell to remind you about the timing. So I maybe uh, give a shout or chat uh, with you when the time will come. Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And today our talk is uh, I live stream on Facebook and YouTube of uh, the conference channels and also uh, our communities. So I believe that there are many people who are watching, but uh, in this uh, uh, webinar room, uh, only a, little, uh, a few people. So uh, maybe the discussion uh, mainly occurs between us, but uh, I, I believe that many people are watching and they're enjoying this session. Mm -hmm. Well, in fact, for today's talk, I pre prepared the, these slides for scientists, <laughs> but not for physicists. I mm. hope it's okay. Yes, yes, I think it's okay. Because the, the, our, the, our audience also scientists, but they are from the different background, for example. Mm -hmm. yes. mm.
Uh, Jivan, could you try to uh, share your screen and tap your microphone? Hello, can you hear me? Ah, uh, yes, we can hear you very well. Okay. Yeah, let's wait a little bit. I share my screen. Is okay. Can you try to make a full screen and going down a few slides? Okay. Okay. Uh, it seems working very well. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Ah, uh, okay. I think it's time. Uh, so welcome everyone to the Neutrino uh, Science section. My name is Sun Kao from KK uh, J Park, and I also the affiliate member of Neutrino Group in Vietnam. So we would like to thank organizer for organizing this conference and uh, especially this section to discuss uh, about a very special particle uh, called Neutrino. So we will have three talks today. Uh, Professor Takaki Kajita will talk about uh, heat discovery of neutrino oscillation with uh, indicate the neutrino head mass and how did change our understanding about the world of elementary particle and also about our universe. So uh, as you may know, the, this discovery it uh, recognized with the Nobel Prize in 2015. And he also discussed about the world leading international scientific uh, project called uh, Hypercamio Kande, uh, recently approved by the Japanese diet. Uh, for the second talk, uh, Professor Nguyen Tiong from, from IOP VAS will uh, talk about the uh, related a uh, result from T2K experiment uh, with the uh, judgment from T2, uh, from Neutrino Group in Vietnam. And the talk we focused on the CP violation and how it connects to the matter and antimatter asymmetry in the universe. Uh, for the first, uh, we will have a, a bit technical talk from Dr. Khaibui Osaka University on the search for uh, the a process so called the Neutrino less double beta decay. So did it not observed yet, but uh, it's very interesting uh, to, to start because it uh, will answer a very fundamental question related to the uh, nature of the neutrino mass. So for the audience, please type your question in the Q&A box or join it on the Slack, the dedicated check, a channel for the discussion. And then uh, let's get started. So I think many people uh, know about the Professor Takaki Kajita, so I just briefly introduce. So Professor Takaki Kajita got PhD in 1986, and his supervisor, uh, Professor Masatoshi Kobayashi, is one of the founder of neutrino astronomy with a detection of the neutrino um, from the supernova in 1988 and got Nobel Prize in 2002. Um, it's very sad that uh, Professor Masatoshi uh, Bajasi passed away just uh, one week ago. And in 1998 Nichino Conference organized in Japan, Professor Takaki Kajita with his colleagues in Super Kamiokande experiment make announcement of the discovery of the Nichino oscillation and today we're very happy to 
here he's inside uh, of this uh, discovery. So please go ahead, Professor Taraki Kajita. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. And also thank you very much for the invitation to this meeting. Um, today, well, I'm going to talk about the uh, um, neutrinos and the universe. Okay. Um, uh, this is the outline. Oh, by the way, no, I should mention. Uh, in this um, first page, you see a photo. Uh, this is the uh, photo of the Super Kamiokande experiment. So I'm going to talk about the uh, neutrino results from this experiment. Okay, so this is the outline of this talk. First, I have an introduction. That is the um, uh, neutrino physics in Kamioka before Super Kamiokande. Then I want to move on to the discovery of neutrino oscillations, solar neutrino oscillations. Then um, I want to talk about the present activity in Super Kamiokande. That is the search for relic supernova neutrinos. Then before finishing this talk, I want to talk about the future of neutrino studies in Kamioka. Then I'll summarize this talk. Okay, now um, um, I want to show you uh, these two photos. These are the water chunk of detectors um, that started the experiment in the 80s. In the 80s, uh, large underground detectors were constructed to observe proton decays. Um, the left one is the IMB experiment in the United States. And the right one is the Kamiokande experiment in Japan. So these experiments were constructed to observe proton decays, but unfortunately, uh, proton lifetime was much longer than initially expected in the 70s. So these experiments were unable to observe proton decays. Um, by the way, I want to show you the location of the uh, Kamiokande experiment. This is the map of Japan. And well, uh, here is a location of the Kamiokande experiment, and you expect uh, that the experiment is in the mountain area, and that is correct. And this photo shows the uh, Kamioka area. And well, if you look at the photo carefully, um, in, the, in the middle of the mountain, there are some facilities. And in fact, these are the mining facility. So, Kamiokande was constructed in an active mine. <clears throat> now, I said proton decays were not observed, but in 1987, a very spectacular event occurred. And this is, these are the photos of the uh, large Magellanic cloud that this large Magellanic cloud is the uh, um, nearby galaxy to our Milky Way galaxy. And, and well, if you look at the, uh, this star, then after February, this star exploded. This was the supernova 1987A. Around that time, um, both Kamiokande and IMB were taking data. And therefore, these experiments observed neutrinos associated with the supernova 1987A. And this is the world data from Kamiokande, IMB, and also the Russian experiment, Baksan data are uh, included. 
So, a total of 24 neutrino events were observed by these detectors. And although the number of events was only 24, this, this had a profound impact to the understanding of the basic mechanism of the supernova explosion. And therefore, Professor Koshiba uh, received the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2002. And well, it, it, well that was great. And I, I also have to uh, report that Professor Koshiba passed away on November 12th in this year. So we miss him greatly. Now, um, in addition to the uh, supernova uh, neutrino observation, Kamio Kande observed solar neutrinos and also confirmed the solar neutrino deficit. Furthermore, um, Kamio Kande studied neutrinos produced by cosmic ray interactions in the atmosphere. And by, by the studies of these atmospheric neutrinos, they observed that deficit of mu neutrinos. And this was the initial hint for the atmospheric neutrino oscillations. So all these results suggested that what a Cherenkov detector is very useful for neutrino physics and astrophysics. Therefore, the next generation experiment, Super Kamiokan, was approved. Now I'd like to move on to the discovery of neutrino oscillations. Um, Super Kamiokande is a much bigger version of the original Kamiokande. It is about 40 meters in diameter and 40 meters in height. It contains 50,000 tons of very clean water. And it is an international collaboration. Uh, we have 180 to 90 collaborators from 10 countries. <clears throat> and the inside of the Super Kamiokan looked like this. And this photo was taken in January 96, when we almost finished the uh, construction of the Super Kamiokan detector. And in fact, you can see that the water level was almost in the middle. And this photo was, of course, taken from the top of the detector, watching inside. <clears throat> and the experiment started in April 1996. And from the beginning of the experiment, uh, we concentrated our studies on neutrinos. Um, there were actually two groups. One group studied uh, atmospheric neutrinos. Another group studied solar neutrinos. And atmospheric neutrinos are produced by cosmic ray interactions in the atmosphere. These cosmic rays interact with air nucleus typically producing pions. Then these pions are unstable, decaying to muon, then to electron. And during this decay chain, neutrinos are produced. And in super Kamiokande, we observe these neutrinos. And this is a typical pattern of the neutrino event observed in super Kamiokande. Here, the cylindrical uh, detector is open to flat. And here you can see many colored circles. And these indicate the photon signals <coughs> observed by each photo detector. And the red color means photons came early. And blue colors means uh, photons came late. And also the um, uh, area of this circle is proportional to the pulse height or number of photons. 
So <clears throat> these are the typical Neutrino event. Uh, this is the typical Neutrino event. And Super Kamiokande observes about 10 Neutrino events in a day. And therefore, a group of people studies these events. <clears throat> and well, already, as, a, as I already mentioned in Kamiokande, there was some indication, some interesting data showing that there's a deficit of mu neutrinos. Well, in fact, during the uh, Kamiokande era, we didn't know what was going on, but we have been thinking that maybe the deficit was due to neutrino oscillations. And here in this slide, I want to briefly discuss neutrino oscillations. And um, this phenomenon was predicted more than half a century ago by, by theoretical people, Maki, Nakagawa, Sakata, and Ponte Corvo. Anyway, these people predicted if neutrinos have mass, neutrinos change their type or flavor from one type to the other. For example, as shown in this slide, um, if a mu neutrino is created and begin to propagate to the right, then the probability that mu neutrino to remain mu neutrino goes down. But if this particle continue to propagate uh, to the right, then the probability come back to unity go down, go up, and so on. And when the probability mu neutrino to remain mu neutrino goes down, then at that time, tau neutrino is appearing. So this is neutrino oscillations. And if the neutrino mass is smaller, the oscillation length gets longer. So neutrino oscillation is a very important tool to measure the very small neutrino mass. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> we wanted to confirm the deficit of, oh, deficit of muon neutrinos was due to neutrino oscillations. And therefore, we thought this way. Um, neutrinos, are created by cosmic ray interactions in the atmosphere. Therefore, neutrinos are created in every place in the atmosphere of the Earth. Therefore, some of the neutrinos are created above the super Kamiokande detector, maybe 10 to 20 kilometers above us. And these neutrinos, after traveling 10 to 20 kilometers, come to the detector and they may interact in the detector. But the flight length is on only 10 to 20 kilometers. Therefore, they do, they do not, the flight length is maybe not long enough to oscillate. However, we also, we should also notice that neutrinos are also created in the other side of the earth. And these neutrinos have to travel typically 10,000 kilometers. Therefore, they travel long enough. Therefore, they may oscillate to other neutrino type. So if we think this way, then we naively expect that we should observe the up versus down asymmetry of the atmospheric muon neutrinos. And in fact, we, we thought we should observe this asym up versus down asymmetry in Kamiokande. But Kamiokande was too small. It had only 3,000 tons. Therefore, we needed much larger detector. And that was Super Kamiokande. 
Anyway, in Super Kamiokande, we worked hard to see uh, to, to see this effect. And in fact, in two years after the start of the experiment, we were able to get uh, large enough data to see this effect. And this is one of the slides uh, we have presented at the Nutino conference in 1998. Uh, here in this slide, we show the zin sang distributions for electron neutrino candidates and mu neutrino candidates. And cosine theta one means downgoing neutrinos and minus one means upward going neutrinos. And of course these neutrinos uh, came from the other side of the earth. And black circles with the error bars show the data and the shaded histograms show the Monte Carlo prediction without neutrino oscillations. Then for muon neutrinos, we notice that for downgoing neutrinos, the data and the Monte Carlo prediction agreed quite well. On the other hand, for upward going neutrinos, there is almost a factor of two deficit in the data compared with the Monte Carlo prediction. And this data can be extremely well explained if we include neutrino oscillations as shown in this slide. <clears throat> okay, that way um, neutrino oscillation was uh, discovered and, uh, and announced. Then I think Super Kamiokand was extremely, extremely lucky because there is KK, and in KK, there was some proton accelerator. And people proposed a long baseline experiment between KK and Super Kamiokande. It had the baseline length of 250 kilometers. And with this experiment, um, people confirmed the uh, neutrino oscillation with accelerator beam. Then I think you are even more lucky because in Tokai, the new accelerator, JPAC, was constructed. And the new neutrino beam began in 2010. Uh, this is the T2K experiment. And I believe the next speaker is going to talk about this experiment. Therefore, I'm not going to detail. But anyway, and the point was with this experiment, the three flavor oscillation effect was uh, discovered. <coughs> now, <coughs> I want to come back to the uh, uh, Super Kamiokande experiment. Well, actually, I'm going to talk about the solar neutrino experiment, uh, solar neutrino oscillations. But for this, um, well, actually, Super Kamiokande was not the only one uh, that contributed to the neutrino oscillations. And let's begin. Well, first of all, about half a century ago, uh, people want to confirm the energy generation mechanism of the sun. Of course, the energy is generated by nuclear fusion processes, but we wanted to confirm by observing neutrinos from the sun. And in the middle of this slide, I show you the photo of the Homestake experiment. And this Homestake solar neutrino experiment was the first that observed solar neutrinos. Well, that was, very, that was a great success. And therefore, Ray Davis Jr. received the Nobel Prize in 2002. However, the event rate was only about one third of the prediction. This was a mystery and people uh, called this mystery a solar neutrino problem. And this problem was confirmed 
by the subsequent experiments in the 80s and 90s. <clears throat> but unfortunately, during the 20th century, um, you are unable to really understand the cause of the solar neutrino deficit. And then um, early in the century, the snow experiment played a very important role to understand the solar neutrino problem. And this is the sketch of the solar uh, snow experiment. And in fact, in, in snow experiment, they use 1,000 tons of heavy water. The use of heavy water was essential for the understanding of the solar neutrino problem because uh, in heavy water, there are deutons and electron neutrino, neutrinos interact with the deuteron producing E minus PP. Furthermore, neutrinos interact with the deuteron disintegra disintegrating this neutron into Pn. So this, this second interaction is independent of the neutrino type. Therefore, by comparing the um, new E, D charge current interaction and new D neutral current interaction rate, um, you can estimate the fraction of new E in the solar neutrino flux. And the result is shown here. If snow observed the electron neutrino flux by this reaction, then the event rate was only about one third of the expectation. However, if they observed the uh, uh, total neutrino flux by the neutral current interaction, then the observed rate was essentially just as expected. Since the sun can only produce electron neutrinos, therefore the two third are due to neutrino oscillations. I mean, two thirds are new mu plus new tau, and therefore these new mu plus new tau are due to neutrino oscillations. So this way, people are convinced that solar neutrino deficit was due to neutrino oscillations. And I, I just want to show you the super cameo candidate, which is shown here. Super cameo candidate observes solar neutrinos by neutrino electron scattering. And in this reaction, electron neutrinos has the largest cross section, but new E plus, uh, sorry, new mu plus new, new, new mu plus new TAS can also interact, interact with, a, with an electron with reduced cross section. Then this um, super Kamiokande um, data are shown here. And in fact, um, the super Kamiokande data can be very well explained um, just consistently with the snow experiment. So this way, solar neutrino deficit was confirmed to be due to neutrino oscillations. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> we, are, we are excited, but you may wonder why we are so excited with the neutrino mass. And well, in order to say explain why we are excited, uh, let me use this plot. Uh, in this plot, we show the mass of charged leptons and quarks. So there are six types of quarks, and these, um, these mass are shown by blue and green colors. And there are three types of charged leptons, and these mass are shown by red colors. Now, neutrino oscillations were discovered more than 20 years ago. And since then, there have been many important um, studies on the neutrino mass. And now we can approximately tell you the mass of neutrinos and they are here. So clearly neutrino mass are much smaller 
than the corresponding mass of charged leptons and quarks. And in fact, neutrino mass are approximately or maybe more than 10 orders of magnitude smaller than the corresponding mass of quarks and charged leptons. And therefore, we are excited. 10 orders of magnitude difference. And we believe this is the key to better understand elementary particles and the universe. Now, I would like to move on to the present uh, activity in Super Kamiokande, that is Lake Supernova Neutrinos. Well, uh, earlier in this talk, I discussed that neutrinos were observed from supernova 1987A. And in Super Kamiokande, we have been waiting for the next nearby supernova. Unfortunately, no observation of supernova neutrinos so far in Super Kamiokande. But since the uh, uh, supernova neutrinos are so important, therefore, we wanted to think about the, some other way to observe supernova neutrinos. And in the, oh, this is the uh, image of the universe. And during the, um, uh, during, well, during the age of the universe, there have been many supernova explosions. And these supernova emit, emit uh, substantial number of neutrinos, and these neutrinos are still propagating in the present day universe. Therefore, Super Kamiokande collaboration would like to observe these uh, neutrinos produced by the supernova explosion in the past universe. Um, unfortunately, the original super Kamiokande is not really powerful enough to, to convincingly observe Rayk supernova neutrinos. And there are many other neutrino backgrounds. Therefore, we have to um, separate the uh, super, Rayk supernova neutrino signal and other neutrino backgrounds. And for this, uh, we decided to put gadolinium into the super Kamiokande tank. If we have a gadolinium into the super Kamiokande water, then um, we expect this kind of reaction. Uh, electron anti neutrinos will interact with the proton producing E plus a neutron. Then this neutron will be absorbed by a gadolinium emitting gamma rays to with total energy of about 8 MeV. And therefore, these gamma ray signals are visible in water Cherenkov detectors. Therefore, by the coincidence of E plus and delayed neutron capture, then we can separate the uh, uh, relic supernova neutrino interaction and from the other, and the other uh, neutrino backgrounds. And this uh, left figure shows the uh, gadolinium capture efficiency. If the gadolinium sulfate concentration is 0.02%, the efficiency will be about 50%. If it is 0.2%, the efficiency will be about 90%. And therefore, <clears throat> for the moment, Super Kamiokan de decided to put 0.02% gadolinium sulfate into the super Kamiokan water. And uh, this is the expectation. Uh, these are the expected signals, red, uh, black, and green histograms. And the background as shown by uh, these uh, error bars. So depending on the model, super Kamiokan would observe the relic supernova signal with a statistical significance between two and four sigma. Therefore, we wanted to uh, put gadolinium into the super Kamiokande tank. But unfortunately, 
um, the original super camion can the tank had a water leak, which is not good to put the gadolinium into the super camion can the tank. Therefore, in 2018, there was a major improvement work in the super camion can the. So these photos show the uh, uh, work and the uh, inside the detector. And the, the, the repair work was successful. Then finally, this year, we put gadolinium into the super kamiokan the tank. The left figure shows the gadolinium sulfate concentration as a function of time and as a function of um, height in the super kamiokan the tank. So we started killing in July and at the end of, uh, at, at, at late August this year, the super kamiokan was filled with the gadolinium sulfate, uh, sulfate. And the, in, the, in the right side, I show you the evidence that uh, gadolinium is actually capturing neutrons and the evidence that super case observing the gamma rays uh, by neutron capture by gadolinium. Here, the cosmic ray muon, stopping muon captured in oxygen 16. Then um, there's a nitro nitrogen 16, and this nitrogen 16 decay to a nitrogen 15 plus neutron, and this neutron is captured by gadolinium. So, as a function of calendar day, the event rate changes. Well, initially, say around July 21, most of the water are just pure water. Therefore, there's no such kind of gamma ray signal. But as you can see in August 12, in most of the super camel kind of tank, uh, this uh, neutron capture signal is seen. Oh, by the way, this here, the uh, vertical axis is the um, water height, and the horizontal axis is the R square. So, so clearly, uh, we are ready, and we hope that SKGD will produce interesting results in the coming years. Now, I want to move on to the future. Well, okay, um, maybe I do not have much time to explain the uh, um, physics, but well, of course we, we observe that in the present day universe, we have only matter particles, but in Big Bang, we naively expect there should have been equal number of matter particles and antimatter particles, but by some reason, there was slight excess in the matter part. And therefore, this produced the present day matter dominated universe. But we do not know what was the mechanism to produce a slight excess in the matter part during Big Bang. But there's a theoretical prediction that neutrinos with this very small mass might be the key to understand the big mystery of the matter in the universe. So we'd like to uh, confirm this theoretical prediction experimentally. And in fact, um, the first step to observe uh, this, uh, well, to confirm this theory, uh, we'd like to observe if oscillation of neutrinos and those of anti-neutrinos are different. If the difference is observed, it will be the first step to understand the origin of the matter in the universe. In fact, in, even in the present T2K experiment, people are trying to observe this effect and I believe the second or the next, the next speaker is going to talk about this. But um, the present day experiments are, to be honest, not really powerful enough 
to, res, uh, to produce the uh, convincing results. Therefore, people are thinking about the next, gener next generation experiments. One is the Dune in the United States, and another is the Hyper Kamiokan in Japan. <clears throat> and in Hyper Kamiokan, neutrinos are produced with the upgraded JPAC and we, we just have to construct a new hyper Kamioka and the detector in Kamioka. And in fact, um, compared with the present P2K, um, with the bigger fiducial mass and higher beam power in JPAC, we expect about 22 times higher event rate than present P2K. And this is the um, hyper Kamioka and experiment. It will be about 72 meters in height and 68 meters in diameter. And it will contain about eight times larger uh, what, uh, well, it will be about 10 times larger fiducial mass than, than Super Kamiokande. And because of this huge mass, we expect many important research topics in neutrino physics and astrophysics. And the construction has started already this year, and the experiment will start in 2027, we hope. And Hyper Kamiokande collaboration is an international collaboration. We have more than 400 members from 19 countries, and the collaborators are increasing very rapidly now. And this is the uh, um, construction status. Now, the entrance yard is under construction. And if I understand correctly, the entrance to this hyper, to the hyper Kamiokande should be in the, uh, in the right side of this photo. And this is a sensitivity to the CP violation, that is the difference between neutrino oscillations and the anti neutrino oscillations. And I compare the sensitivities of Dune and Hyper K. And you, well, please look at the uh, orange and red uh, curves. They are the sensitivities after 10 years of the experiment. And then you realize that these experiments are really sensitive. We expect seven to eight sigma static, statistical significance if the CP phase delta is in a reasonably preferable range. <clears throat> so these experiments are really powerful. And well, okay, so today, actually, I'm, I'm talking about the neutrino physics, but let me just show you one slide. This is the sensitivities to the proton decays. Well, well the initial motivation for the water chunk of detectors in the 80s was to search for proton decays. Unfortunately, proton lifetime was much longer than initially expected. But the search for proton decay is continuing, and it will, it will continue even in hyperkamiokande. Then this is the sensitivity, three sigma sensitivity as a function of the calendar years. And hyperkamiokande will have the three sigma sens discovery sensitivity after, say, 20 years of the operation. And hyper can you observe the signal if the true proton lifetime is shorter than 10 to 35 years for E plus pi zero or three times 10 to 34 years for new K plus. So um, in my opinion, proton decay is an, another important topic for this huge neutrino detector. And finally, I also want to mention about the uh, supernova neutrino burst. 
Earlier in this talk, I mentioned that in 1987A, um, 24 events were observed. That was really only 24 events. Now, suppose this next supernova explode at the center of the our at the center of uh, our Milky Way galaxy, then in hyper K, we expect 50 to 80,000 events in about 10 seconds. Then this will be, these events will be very useful to understand the dynamics of the supernova central engine, explosion mechanism, black hole or uh, neutron star formation, and please look at the uh, uh, plot in the right. Then maybe we can see uh, this kind of um, signal that is the evidence for standing accretion shock instability. So that would be great. <laughs> and finally, hyper K can detect neutrino burst even for supernova in Andromeda. Okay, let me summarize. Neutrinos are very important for the studies of the universe. And neutrino oscillations and, and therefore small neutrino mass was discovered by Super Kamiokande in 1998. And small neutrino mass is very important for the better understanding of elementary particles. And small neutrino mass might also be the key to understand the fundamental questions of the universe. So we'd like to continue contributing to neutrino physics and astrophysics with the next generation experiment, Hyper Kamiokande. And finally, we, uh, we think it would be great to work together in Hyper K with our international colleagues, and of course, including our Vietnamese colleagues. Okay, that's all from me. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much uh, for a very interesting talk, Professor uh, Nakaya uh, Kajita. Uh, so we have uh, two questions from Professor Tanaka. Uh, Professor Tanaka, do you want to give a talk to uh, Professor Kajita directly? Oh yeah, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Ah, okay, thank you very much uh, for a uh, very in instructive talk. Uh, I have two questions. Mm -hmm. Are neutrinos a candidate of dark matter? Okay, um, well, in fact, um, say many years ago, maybe in the eighties, people thought that neutrino could be the candidate for the dark matter. Mm -hmm. However, and the observed mass was were just too small. Therefore, neutrinos cannot be the major part of the uh, dark matter. Mm -hmm. We have to find out some other dark matter particles. Mm -hmm. Okay, the second question is uh, about the technology, future technology. Mm -hmm. So, because I'm in a, a faculty of engineering, uh, do you think that neutrino can be used for future communication or, or information processing technology mm -hmm. like photons or electrons? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for this question. Um, well, I would say in principle, um, neutrinos, uh, with the neutrinos, uh, you can have some communication, but the uh, amount of information is so limited. And in order to communicate, you, we need so much energy, therefore, Practically, I don't think neutrinos can be used for the communication tool. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Oh, maybe can I uh, add more? Uh, so actually related to this question, I remember the, the, that experiment in US tried to send a signal uh, from the acceler accelerator and that uh, in the kind of the uh, electric kind of the pattern to mimic the sending the information. And I think the, they succeed to send the signal, but that uh, Professor Kajita mentioned it uh, really difficult and challenging to get very, for example, very 
high intense neutrino beam and very big detector to allow the technology. Yeah. Okay, uh, let me see. Okay, we have uh, one more question. So uh, let me allow them to to ask directly from- uh, Yes, uh, my name uh, is Pham Nam Hai from uh, Tokyo Institute of Technology. So I heard that uh, there is a need to modify the standard model because of the discovery of a neutrino oscillations. Can you explain the progress on this uh, problem? Oh, thank you. Yes, certainly the standard model of elementary particles must be modified or improved. Uh, and certainly uh, uh, neutrino mass is a very important input for the improvement of the standard model. Um, well, certainly um, there is a very promising theory to explain the extremely smallness, extreme smallness of the neutrino mass. <clears throat> but um, to be honest, uh, we are not really uh, ready to say that this is the improved standard model of elementary particles. There are still many possibilities. So I, I think we need various other experimental evidences for the physics beyond the standard model. Oh, thank you very much. So that means you need to do uh, more experiment yeah. in order to, eat, to choose which model it will be best fit for us for the neutrino mm -hmm. physics. Oh, thank you very much. Right, so actually at the, at the third talk, there are a talk from the, the search for the neutrino led double beta decay. And actually if that really process, we may uh, want uh, looking forward because if that happened, it actually, we know better the model can, it can be extended. So we are on the way. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah, certainly the neutrino less double beta decays are very important. Uh, oh, okay. Okay, I, I, I see the, uh, another question from Nguyen Thanh Vinh. Uh, you want to uh, ask uh, directly? Yes, um, my name is Nguyen Thanh Vinh. I am from National Institute of Advanced Industrial Science and Technology. And thank you very much for the very inspiring talk. I was just wondering that uh, if uh, neutrino uh, have mass and uh, it is oscillating, so there's the energy of a neutrino. So uh, can you comment on the possibility to harvest the energy of neutrino? And then we can apply it to the uh, electrics and uh, device and so on. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, the problem, well, well certainly neutrinos uh, have energy, but unfortunately the problem is um, neutrinos, are, well, it, it's very difficult to, to detect neutrinos. Therefore, uh, I, 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 I do not find any practical way uh, to use these neutrinos. Can I have one question? Uh, so sorry, maybe I add a little bit to the previous question. Uh, so uh, Professor Kajita mentioned it's really difficult. However, there are uh, one group, they are they working on the harvesting the neutrino energy actually. Like for example, when you have the um, PC in the sleep mode, it actually requires very small amount of energy. And they working on the make a neutrino chip or neutrino small uh, energy box uh, to, to work on that square. But I, I don't know how it can work. I have same impression at the group, Professor Kajita. I'll go ahead. Uh, I... uh, yes, uh, I have two questions. One, one is very naive question. Um, uh, can you explain in a very, uh, common sense of why the small mass of neutrino is important for uh, 
well, uh, exploring the uh, secret of the universe because that's the main point in your talk, but uh, don't have time to explain it in more detail, but can you okay. uh, explain it in a more like direct way? Yeah, well, now, according to the uh, standard model, um, mass of charged leptons and quarks are said to be generated by the Higgs particle. Okay, now, of course, we understand that, 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 that neutrinos have mass, but the mass is extremely small, 10 orders of magnitude smaller than the other particle's mass. And therefore, we do not think that the neutrinos mass were generated by the Higgs mechanism. So we think that we need some other mechanism to generate the neutrino mass. Therefore, that must be something new. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And, and I have my second question is somewhat more general question. Uh, I heard that the, the development of Super uh, Kamio Kande has also uh, ignited uh, many development in the photon detectors for in, in Japanese companies as well. And I think that the research on neutrino also have many impact on other technologies. So could you uh, comment on the uh, possible impact of the uh, hyper Kamio Kande on the development of other technologies? And also, uh, I think I see that the uh, research on neutrino involves many countries is an international project. So what is the importance of the international correlation in neutrino uh, research? Why do you have to gather so many countries in the same project? Well, thank you. Well, uh, yes, the, well, in my opinion, one of the, reason for the international collaboration is the expertise. Um, there are certainly many experts, for example, in electronics, online data acquisition, and also data analysis. And we'd like to collaborate with them to maximize the uh, output from the hyperkamiokande experiment. Yes, thank you. I hope that in the future, Vietnamese researchers are going to join and become a part of those projects. Oh, definitely. I hope so. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. So, is there any more questions? I didn't see. Uh, sorry, uh, can I have one more question? Uh, yes, go ahead. Uh, so, uh, thank you, Professor Kajita. I'm Kai from Osaka University. So, thank you very much for your talk. So I in the slide that uh, in in the Camille Kande, uh, in the super Camille Kande experiment you use the water charing curve detector and to the hyper K also you use the water charing curve detector so it's like very unique uh, detector the detection techniques for the neutrino but in your opinion is there any other techniques that we can use to detect the neutrino any improvement on the detector side something like that Thank you. Any improvement in the detector side? Well, actually, yes. Well, <laughs> although we continue using water, but well, as far as the technology is concerned, we have many improvements. For example, the photo detector, photomultiplier tubes, the shape has been same uh, from the Kamiokande experiment. If you look at this Kamiokande phototube and this hyper Kamiokande phototube, they look the same. However, the performance is really significantly different. So we have been improving. And furthermore, um, I believe the electronic system should be much more improved, even compared with this present super Kamiokande experiment. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I didn't see any more question. Um, maybe, maybe can I ask the last one? So it may be related to the historical claim of the neutrino oscillation. So when we observe the deficit, actually not just a single explanation for that deficit, we have the neutrino decay and neutrino decoherence model. So what 
really bring you and your colleague to claim the need to know oscillation at that time? Uh, I mean, the background behind, I, I don't know. Well, well okay. Uh, in fact, neutrino decay and neutrino decoherence models were, as if I remember correctly, proposed after the super key announcement of the neutrino oscillations. Well, the, the, the motivation for some people to propose this decay and decoherence model was the to explain the Zinsangu dependent deficit. And the argument was, well, in order to explain the uh, up versus down asymmetry of the event rate, uh, you may not need neutrino oscillations. These models can also reproduce the data. That was the motivation. Then in Super Kamiokande, and of course in other experiments, uh, we confirmed the oscillation because we observe the um, fast oscillation minimum. That is the unique feature to the oscillation that can be only uh, produced if there is some um, quantum interference. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, if there's time, I, I would like to ask one more question. Maybe that is for a younger student. Um, oh, yeah. Is it okay? Yes. Uh, when you are uh, exploring the uh, oscillation of uh, neutrino and, and you determine that it should have mass, uh, whether that belief of the mass of neutrino is a major uh, belief in the uh, neutrino uh, field at the time, or it's just a very uh, surprising result. I mean, for a young student, it's very hard to work on something that um, a majority of the community think that is not correct. But that is the starting point of many uh, greater uh, exploration in the futures. So I would like to ask, what what do you think, and what is the motivation behind you when uh, when you try to pursue that kind of research uh, at a young age? Yes, yeah, thank you. In fact, um, the the reason I I worked hard on the uh, neutrino data was the uh, was actually motivated by the experimental data. Well, of course, when, even when I was a graduate course student, I knew the theory of neutrino oscillations, but really the data from the Kamiokande experiment motiva motivated me to study neutrinos because the Kamiokande data was so strange. We, I believe there must be something in that data. So that was the whole motivation. Mm. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, we have a uh, okay. One last question. Um, you want to ask directly? Okay. <laughs> sorry, there are many questions. Uh, I yeah, I'm sorry. Um, so my, I'm not a physics, and I'm wondering that how the neutrino play a part to either creation of the life or the of the the most basic creature. Mm, I, 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 I'm sorry. Could, 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 could you say again? Uh, yes. Uh, I, I'm just wondering how the uh, neutrino uh, <clears throat> play a part in the um, chemical um, metabolism or something like that. Oh, I'm sorry. I have no idea. <laughs> uh, and maybe I, I can interpret for you. So uh, his question is actually on the box. Uh, he asked about if the neutrino play a role in our creation of the universe or our life. Oh, creation yes. of the universe. I see. OK. Yeah. Well, OK. Um, in a sense, maybe. But, well, we do not know. Well, at the beginning of the universe, there was an inflation period, but we do not know the mechanism of the inflation. And some people say that neutrino physics is also relevant for the inflation. Okay. 
Uh, thank you very much. There, there are also some one try to ask, but I think we have to spend time for other talks. So thank you very much, Professor Kajita, uh, for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, shall we move to uh, the second talk? Uh, Professor Hong Wen, you want to share your screen? Okay, so we had a uh, we have the second talk from Professor Hong Wen from Institute of Physics, Vast uh, Vietnam. So she uh, joined the two case experiments in 2017 and uh, on a, the founder of Nutrino Group in Vietnam. So today she will talk about the matter anti matter asymmetry of the universe uh, from the indicate from the latest result from the two case experiment. Uh, please go ahead. Oh. Can you hear me, sorry? Uh, yes, we can hear you well. Uh, thank you, Shankar, for the introduction. Uh, I'm very happy uh, today I have a chance uh, to present, uh, actually on behalf of the Neutrino Group in Vietnam, uh, to present the uh, current results of the T2K experiments, which we has uh, been involved since uh, 2017. And uh, thanks, uh, Professor Kazita, very much for your very interesting and very detailed talk and introduce uh, many things related to neutrinos and uh, uh, overviews of, I think, almost uh, very important experiments uh, on neutrinos already. Uh, so for my talk, uh, I also have uh, more limited uh, times. So I present briefly uh, about the uh, these results of the T2K experiments and, uh, and a shortly overview of the T2K experiments because it in, involves also the civil Kam, uh, Kande, which already uh, introduced very details uh, from the Kajita talk. Um, and, uh, uh, and also, I think uh, this is my talk. I want uh, to spend more time to introduce the activities of. Uh, uh, Vietnam Neutrino Group on the uh, T2K experiments uh, and also a more general uh, for the neutrino physics research in Vietnam now. Uh, so uh, this is uh, my outline. Um, uh, so firstly, I, uh, I will introduce the anti matter, antimatter asymmetry and the CP violations. Uh, and then I will present the uh, T2K experiments uh, with searching for the CV violation from neutrino oscillations. Uh, and then uh, the participation of Vietnam group in the T2K and also in initial basic uh, physics research uh, and uh, the future plan for Vietnam neutrino group at uh, so ICISE in Quinion. So here is a, a group we, uh, we, uh, we first uh, create a group working especially in the experiments on neutrino physics. Uh, so uh, the matter and antimatter as, uh, symmetry violation as also mentioned in the previous talk. So the big bang sh uh, should have create an equal amount of the matter and antimatter. But uh, uh, now you see that uh, the matter is much more than the antimatter in the universe. So why this? Uh, it's a reality. So these are very uh, big questions for science. And uh, uh, we are going to answer these uh, questions uh, related to the uh, neutrinos. So firstly, uh, I would like to briefly introduce uh, about the uh, in mathematics and also physics, and especially particle physics, uh, the matter is described by particles and antimatter is uh, anti-particles. And the CP symmetry is the symmetry between the matter and antimatter because each chain is chain between the particle uh, and, and anti-particles. For example, if you see uh, in this plot, uh, you have an electrons uh, it's become to positron with the opposite charge and the helicity uh, inverse under CP symmetry. So P is actually that is the parity, or the is the is the space uh, reflections, 
so you can change from uh, left-handed systems to the right-handed system. And the charge is the charge conservations. Uh, so uh, basically uh, is uh, change the charge uh, of the particle uh, uh, from the, uh, into the opposite uh, value, for example, electrons just minus one and positron half just plus one. That is uh, uh, C. So, uh, sorry. So between the matter and an antimatter, there's the CP symmetry. So we have uh, the anti symmetry uh, So we have the imbalance of the matter and antimatter. Uh, so the question appears, is the CP symmetry violated? And can the CP symmetry violation can be a reason for the imbalance between the matter and antimatter in the universe? So that is, uh, that is a big question. So uh, I'm going to explain this uh, during my talk. Uh, so uh, in the weak interactions, uh, so we have the C, uh, P and CP symmetry. So, but uh, firstly, uh, the P symmetry is violet uh, for the, um, I make this example for the neutrino. So we have the left-handed neutrinos and under P, uh, piloty symmetry is be become to a neutrino right-handed neutrino. But uh, in the reality, neutrino is only left-handed. So uh, this process is a, uh, let's say it's a violet under the P symmetry. And another example for the uh, charge symmetry violation is uh, we have a neutrino left-handed and under charge uh, symmetry, it's become to the left-handed anti-neutrino, but anti-neutrino only right-handed. So, so we don't have this process and this, uh, this C pen, uh, symmetry is violet. How about we combine uh, C, P together? So it means that we, we apply simultaneously uh, charge and uh, charge conservations and the parity symmetry at the same time. And then we uh, change the left-handed neutrino to the right-handed anti-neutrino. So this process is fine. So uh, uh, an example for this uh, process is uh, appear in the pion uh, decay as you see here, the P uh, is uh, violet under this C, but CP can be conserved. So we have this decay process of, of the pions. Uh, so uh, until now, um, we can see that a combination of the CP may be a good symmetry for nature. And this already uh, is, uh, it was proposed by Landau in uh, 1957. But in uh, 1964, uh, the first observations uh, by Koronins and Fitch uh, it's uh, about the CP violation in quarks. So uh, the quarks uh, also have the, uh, in the weak interactions. So they show the, uh, the CP violations uh, for the, oh, sorry, uh, for the kion in the kion decays and they compare the uh, red uh, width uh, and they see the, the difference here. Uh, and after that, many other experiments or uh, discover the CV version in quarks. In, for example, some experiment at CERN and uh, Fermilab and Baba in Slack and also Belt at KK. Uh, but the amount of the CV violation observed in quarks is far too small to explain the huge imbalance uh, that exists between the matter and, and, and antimatter in the universe. So uh, we need to look for the CP relation in other particles to explain for, the, for this imbalance uh, in the universe, uh, the matter and antimatter. And, uh, and we, the natural question appear is if uh, this uh, CP violation appear in the lab for leptons particle and neutrino is one of the lepton particles. So it is the uh, neutrino is a good candidate for this, for this. So, Yes, so uh, the CB violation in the neutrino is, uh, can be served via the neutrino oscillations. So the neutrino oscillation is already uh, produced, uh, introduced very details uh, from previous talk. So uh, basically, uh, if uh, there is the CB violations, so 
we, we see that this neutrino oscillation uh, for the neutrino, uh, it should be not, uh, if, if, if the CP is symmetry. So we see that neutrino oscillation for the uh, neutrino is should be the same as the anti-neutrino. But if the uh, CP is not symmetry, so if you have the violation, then we, we is, uh, observe the neutrino oscillation is not the same as the uh, anti-neutrino oscillation. So you see this, the, actually the rate of the anti-neutrino is, is longer. Uh, and these results uh, recently have uh, uh, shown by T2K experiments and is uh, public in the nature on April of this year. And actually we uh, see the big difference uh, of the oscillation probability uh, of the oscillation from the muon neutrino to the electron neutrino comparing to the uh, anti-neutrino process, this is it, the part. Uh, so, uh, so in this slide, uh, I introduced the T2K uh, experiments. So T2K is the Tokai to Kamioka. Uh, uh, it is a long baseline neutrino oscillation experiments with a baseline about uh, 295 kilometer uh, from j Park uh, accelerator to create uh, the neutrino. And uh, the neutrino travel is with the distance and uh, the, is, is measure the properties uh, by the far detector with its uh, super Kamio candy. Uh, so super Kamio candy is already introduced uh, from the previous talk. So T2K uh, start uh, taking data uh, early 2010 and um, in uh, one year later, it published the first indication of the new, new E appearance. Um, and uh, and really discover new E appearance in uh, public the results in 1913. And this uh, experiment is the world best precedent measurement of the uh, new mu disappearance, uh, as uh, also mentioned in the previous talk. And uh, 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 the most important it is the leading effort for the CB violation search by observing the appearance of the neutrino electron and anti-electron neutrinos. Uh, and the uh, strategy is uh, at, uh, at J Park, uh, the high intensity protons beam hits a target and it can uh, produce pion and kion. And the kion and pions uh, is a focus by the horns and decay into uh, neutrinos. Um, and uh, we can uh, produce uh, neutrino and anti-neutrino by uh, switch on and switch off the, the horns. Uh, so for the forward horn currents, we can produce neutrinos and for the reverse horn currents, we can produce anti-neutrinos. Uh, and uh, and the neutrino beams are sampled by the near detectors. Uh, here we have uh, the ingrid is uh, on as is, uh, and the ND280 is uh, placed uh, uh, far away. The accelerate, accelerator is about 20, uh, 280 meters uh, <coughs> to measure uh, the property of the neutrino that's uh, created from the accelerator. And after traveling, uh, uh, traveling a distance about 200, 300 kilometers from uh, Tokai to uh, Kamioka, uh, the neutrino measured by the CBK uh, is, uh, is of a 2.5 degree uh, to achieve the narrow uh, band beam peak at the oscillation maximums energy is, uh, with, is about 600 MeV. Uh, and uh, I go directly to the uh, results of a CB violation of the T2K has public uh, nature. So uh, the data is collected between uh, 2009 and 2009 and uh, 2018. Uh, and uh, here we have uh, for the neutrino mode uh, above uh, 1.5, uh, 10 to 21, the proton on target. Uh, and uh, 1.64, 10 to 21 proton on target for the anti-neutrino anti mode. And um, uh, the, we observe uh, in data about uh, 
90 electron neutrino and 15 electron anti neutrinos and compare with the uh, the plot you see you can see on the left uh, with the predictions if we don't have the cp violation so means the delta cp phase is zero uh, then we have a lot um, discrepancy uh, between the Monte Carlo and the data. But when we have the CB violation, for example, if you have maximal CB violation, we have much uh, better the agreements between the data and simulation. And uh, also the combined with the plot on the right, the most uh, CP conserving point, then uh, the CP uh, is pi and, uh, and zero, are ruled out at the uh, confidence of uh, about 20, uh, 95%. Uh, however, these uh, results, um, the number of, observed, of the particle observed is still very small, as, especially for the anti-neutrino particles, uh, for the anti-neutrinos. So uh, we, we need uh, more data and uh, also we need more experiments as mentioned from uh, uh, by Professor Kajita. Uh, and uh, we need to, for example, hyperk and do this example for the future experiments uh, with the larger that data set, uh, and we can test more confidence with the CP violation and to to see whether this uh, effect of CP violation in neutrinos is larger than the CP violation in quarks, uh, in order to explain the imbalance of the matter and antimatter in the universe. Um, and uh, that is the end of results. And next part, I will uh, uh, introduce uh, the participations of Vietnam group in T2K experiments and also in neutrino physics in general. Uh, so uh, uh, we, um, the T2K collaborations have about 500 members uh, from uh, 66 institutes of uh, 12 countries. And Vietnam is the uh, our most recent country has uh, uh, joined the T2K and actually you have been participate in the, is this uh, experiment since uh, 2017. And we are, uh, we are here. So I, I, I'm, uh, oh, sorry. Um, so um, I'm present for IFOS, which is the, uh, belong to ICISE in Quinion and IOP VAS is the uh, Institute of Physics. So where I am uh, uh, is a uh, high the position uh, is the Vietnam Academy of Science and Technology. And um, the Hanoi University of Science has joined uh, last year. So they, 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 uh, they participate uh, two years later, uh, I think since 2019. So until now we have uh, uh, three institute in uh, Vietnam. Uh, participate uh, on th in these experiments. And uh, I think um, this is actually the, uh, the only, uh, the, I mean, the very few, very few uh, other group in Vietnam participate in sort of uh, international col collaborations of the experiments in the world. Uh, uh, le let me introduce a little bit uh, um, myself. So, uh, actually, before uh, uh, working with the uh, neutrino experiments, uh, I, I, I work uh, on the Atlas experiment, uh, LAC in uh, CERN. But after that, uh, when uh, after my PhD, so I did my PhD in France. So, but after that, I go go back Vietnam, and uh, uh, it's uh, really really difficult uh, for me to continue the. Uh, co the collaboration with uh, Atlas at uh, CERN uh, because there are many, many difficulties. Uh, and uh, after that, we find that the new genomes is, uh, uh, we can find more people because uh, also in Vietnam, we have uh, uh, several people working on new genomes, but theoretically. So we can collect together and, uh, and we find also Japan is uh, more close uh, to Vietnam comparing to the uh, Switzerland. Uh, so, so we decided to uh, participate uh, in the uh, neutrino experiments in Japan. And I'm very happy that we, are, we can work uh, uh, um, as a Vietnam member uh, for such a very big and international collaboration in the first time, I think, in, in Vietnam. 
So actually in Vietnam, we also have another experiment is a BL2 uh, in the KK uh, and they start earlier, but uh, yeah, until now we lack of uh, people. So we are trying to collect uh, people working on this kind of uh, uh, international collaboration. So until now we have, uh, we joined two collaboration in KK is a D2K and a BL2. Uh, but BL2 is uh, another people. Uh, so I introduced uh, about the neutrino group. Uh, so this uh, actually at ICISE, we first uh, create the neutrino group uh, working on the neutrino experiments uh, since uh, 2017. Uh, so until now, as uh, uh, we have uh, basically uh, the main people is uh, Shen Gao here and myself, and also we have um, uh, master students uh, and PhD student, and he is the in the uh, second year, end of second year of the PhD, PhD, and now he is working uh, on T2K uh, experiments. And uh, beside that, we have. Uh, so some other uh, students, PhD students from India, uh, they joined us and we work together uh, since uh, last year. Uh, and he also working with us for the bachelor thesis. And after that, he, go, he went to France for the master study and now he go back. Uh, and he is considering whether uh, he we continue the PhD study with us, but it's not yet confirmed. Us uh, and um, uh, history. Um, so uh, the neutrino group uh, uh, was uh, created by Jin uh, Chen Teng Wen in uh, Quinyun, which is uh, I think uh, some of you may know, know about this. It's a very famous international uh, place to organize the inter international conference uh, in Vietnam. It's many many famous uh, since July uh, 2017. Uh, and it's very, very important for us. Uh, we have, uh, we receive a strong support from France, uh, Japan. Uh, the core member from Japan is uh, uh, Professor Nakaya uh, from Kyoto University. He's a scientific group leader of the neutrino group, uh, our neutrino group. And beside that, we have uh, uh, Professor uh, Suzuki from Kobe University. We have, uh, uh, Professor uh, Oyama from KK and uh, Professor Mira from Kamioka, uh, Tokyo University. This is the four uh, core members have a lot uh, from the beginning uh, until now. It's uh, they are also very active uh, to work with us and to have a lot, especially when we go to the band uh, to work in the experiments because we are very new. Uh, not only also myself, I'm very new because I moved uh, from the uh, collisions uh, experiments and uh, for our students. So uh, we are thank very much uh, professor from the plant. Uh, and beside that we have uh, international advisor committee uh, come from different country. Uh, we have uh, from Japan, from USA and from France. And, <clears throat> um, and for us, uh, so, you are very important, so we are a, a small group, but we have a lot um, of other uh, Vietnamese uh, who are working abroad and we collect to and to work together. That is the affiliate uh, members. So Hoi Nam, he is now working in Fermilab USA. Uh, he, uh, he is very active and mentioned uh, actually. Now he also in Fermilab USA. Before he, he is uh, belong to one university, it's Da Nang University in Vietnam. Uh, he, two of them is, uh, has uh, a good, very good experience on experiments and also on neutrinos and they are very active uh, participate in the uh, in our group and um, beside that we have uh, uh, every year uh, students come from the different uh, university from uh, for example US, UK and also uh, France uh, so they joined us uh, uh, because uh, I, I will introduce uh, later, we have some equipment and they, uh, they visit and we, we, we work uh, together uh, and they, they work as an internship uh, in the ICISE in Queen. 
Uh, so um, this is uh, some, uh, at least some uh, scientific activities uh, for our group. So uh, as I mentioned, we participate in the experiments. So uh, firstly, we participate in the T2K since uh, 2017, and it is a uh, uh, work uh, we involve uh, the activities uh, uh, in the, these experiments. Uh, so. Mm, the main uh, the main person with uh, most contributes uh, is uh, Shen Gao. He has a long time uh, experiments, especially working on the neutrino experiments. So he helped a lot uh, um, when we uh, we start the first step with this kind of uh, experiment. So uh, here you, I show the the photo. We are sitting on the center contrarium of uh, T2K at J Park uh, for, during the, the data taking. And uh, beside T2K, uh, we also joined in the uh, Wagashi uh, experiments uh, since uh, 2018. Uh, this uh, experiment is a neutrino nuclear interaction focus uh, in for experiment in Japan. And we, uh, we participate in the Monte Carlo simulation and also cross-section measurements. Uh, so for, for, for these experiments, uh, actually our students uh, spend quite a, a lot of times uh, to work on, on this experiment. Because, and uh, beside that, he also working on the near detector, uh, it, uh, like in grid. Um, and other activities. Uh, so um, let me introduce uh, other uh, activities. So in ICISE, uh, we have a small lab uh, with uh, uh, some very kindly donated equipment from KK and other Japanese institute. And also uh, we, we buy uh, some other uh, equipment. And uh, now we can uh, study the on the MPPC's Mantel Pixel Photon Counting and uh, Skin Tillator. And uh, we uh, study the cosmic ray study with the MPPC and synth. Uh, so this part, uh, as uh, I mentioned before, uh, so we have several uh, many uh, students from abroad, not only abroad but also in Vietnam, uh, Hanoi, uh, Ho Chi Minh City, uh, to come here to. Uh, it's very good uh, for the first training uh, for students uh, with this kind of experiments, and then they. They learn a lot because uh, you know that uh, in the university and institute in in Vietnam we are not uh, is is not familiar with the experiments. So actually, the experiment experimental tool is is really new with uh, with students. So so this kind of uh, study is very very helpful and uh, students uh, enjoy a lot after the internship uh, our group and also uh, by these uh, activities. Uh, we are looking for young students to participate in our project uh, in Vietnam, and I hope that in the future we can build uh, more more uh, power working on this uh, aspect, aspect because uh, it's uh, it's really new and uh, it's not easy <laughs> to find the people working on on this. Uh, so besides uh, these scientific activities, we uh, organize every year uh, the school is called Vietnam School on Neutrinos. So we all, we start to organize it since uh, 2017, and um, for a school, uh, more or less, we have uh, about 20 students come from mostly half uh, mostly Vietnamese students, uh, and we have a lot uh, also Japanese students. So Japanese students, uh, they get more and more, we get more and more Japanese students interested in, 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 in this school. For example, last year we have uh, six, over 20 uh, Japanese students. And beside that, we have a student from India, uh, a student from um, other ASEAN countries like Indonesia and uh, Malaysia. So, um, so in this school, actually be, uh, students uh, are very, uh, excited because uh, they have a chance uh, to uh, communicate uh, to each other, especially we, uh, we, we, we want to create a, a good network between uh, Vietnamese student and Japanese student. And actually this school have uh, Vietnam student a lot because uh, as I mentioned, the experiments is very new for the, for the Vietnamese student. Why Japanese student very good, uh, have very good uh, level in the experiments. So 
uh, actually the Japanese uh, student, they have a good connection with the Vietnamese student and they have a loss. Uh, for example, we our student, when uh, they go to Japan to work, uh, they keep uh, in touch uh, very much. And then, uh, I mean, uh, they get much easier involved in, in the experiments in Japan because they have, they have a, a help a lot of help from the Japanese uh, students. So, uh, sorry, sorry, Hong, what can you uh, go quickly because we are out of time. Okay. okay. Um, and yeah, that is uh, my last slide, I think. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, and uh, here is uh, plan, uh, our plan for future. So we keep working with T2K and Wagashi experiments. And uh, we also want to expand the group bigger. Um, for example, we'd, we'd like to have more senior researcher and invite more affiliate member and visitor. And uh, especially we want to keep enrolling the students working with us. And for longer times when we have more people, so we plan to join the next generation of new Shino experiments like uh, Hyper Kamio Kande, uh, which is uh, thank uh, Professor Kajita very much for the welcome us. Uh, so I would like very much to have a chance uh, to participate in in very very uh, big and very very promising uh, uh, interesting uh, experiments in the future, near future, very near <laughs> near future. I hope that, and uh, also it's very important for us to build a lab and prototype detector in at ICISE for the neutrino related and for search for the dark matter search also. Uh, yeah, thank you very much uh, for your attention. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Hong Wen. And I really apologize that I didn't give time. I don't have the bell to ring. Uh, it, but uh, is there any urgent question? There's one question in the Q&A section. So from Phạm Nam Hải, so can you explain the funding situation in Vietnam in the field of neutrino physics and in the fundamental research in general? Um, so, um, so in Vietnam, um, uh, actually in the past, we, we have uh, quite many people working on neutrinos, but all most of them working on theory. theory. Uh, for experiments, it's very few people. So, um, uh, for experiments, we we all, all we have more people working on the collisions uh, uh, experiments like Atlas or LACB. Uh, so for neutrino, I think uh, our group is uh, the only uh, first, and now new is uh, from uh, Hanoi University of Science. But uh, they have very very few members comparing to us. They have two, two. Uh, uh, when I think the question is concerning about the funding for the- Ah, sorry. Of... Ah, okay, sorry. Yeah, about the funding, yeah, that is a, uh, that is a very uh, interesting question. Um, so for funding, uh, actually, uh, why I say it's uh, very difficult for us to join the experiments because uh, you know the procedure for funding in Vietnam until now is almost for the theoretical research. So I mean the principle, uh, the basically the, uh, so with the experiment is we are very difficult to get the funding. Uh, that is why uh, this uh, neutrino group first uh, uh, found by Jin Chan Thang Wen is a, a quite private uh, company. Uh, it support uh, privately, yeah. Uh, in uh, in Institute of Physics. So for, for example, for which experiment we have to pay the uh, member fee, uh, but this not in the process of the uh, Vietnam government. So it's really difficult for us to get this kind of fund to pay the member fee for the members to join the international collaborations. Uh, along with that, I would like to comment that uh, T2K is now considering to, to, for us to be free to join them. So that is uh, one direction. And the second direction is we have the collaboration with Japanese uh, college and that allow us to apply the funding between Japan and Vietnam. And actually we succeed to get the funding for three years starting from this year. So that, that kind of uh, 
of funding we can handle the situation. Even government, of course, we will try in the government level, but uh, there's some funding we can allow it to, to uh, keep collaborating work in Japan. Thank you very much. Hi. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Professor Angwan. So we move on to yeah. Dr. Kai. I'm really sorry. Okay. So, can you see the slide? Uh, yes, we can see. Okay. The, uh, can you go to full screen? Sure. Okay, uh, so uh, thank you very much for the Benji for the arrangement and uh, thank you very much for the presentation from Professor Kajita and Professor Hongbeng. So again, my name is Bui Tung Kai. I'm from the Research Center for Nuclear Physics in Osaka University. Uh, so uh, the talk is uh, it's good, got to be a very technical talk. So the photon counting method to improve the energy resolution in the candle experiment. Uh, so this is presented on behalf of the Candles collaboration. Okay, so just remind you again, uh, the Nobel Prize in Physics 2015 was awarded for Professor Kajita from Sukhbaka in Japan and Professor McDonald from Snow Collaboration in Canada. So for their discovery of the neutrino oscillations, uh, which show the neutrinos have mass. So however, the absolute neutral mass is still unknown. And there are different experimental approach to uh, determine the mass of neutrino, including the cosmology, single beta decay of tritium, or the neutral-less double beta decay. So uh, this is gonna be focused on this presentation. Okay, so first, uh, double beta decay is a phenomenon occur between uh, two isobaric nuclei so I mean uh, the nuclei with the same mass, it changed the atomic number by two. So there's two cases can happen. Uh, one is the two neutrino double beta decay. Uh, so with the emission of two electrons and two anti-neutrinos. So this decay has been observed uh, in experiment in more than 10 isotopes and uh, is a very rare decay. So half-life this one is 10 to the 18 to 10 to the 20 years. So another process might uh, happen, that is the neutrino-less double beta decay. So uh, with the emission of two electrons, but no emission of anti-neutrinos. This one has not been observed yet. And uh, the decay time is very long, longer than 10 to 26 years. It is an extremely rare decay. So uh, the double beta decay release the energy Q beta beta in the form of the kinetic energy of electron and anti-neutrino. So neutrino is almost undetectable in our detector. So we only measure the kinetic energy of electrons. Uh, so uh, in the case of a two neutrino double decay, the, the two anti-neutrino will carry a random part of energy. So that's why we will have the energy spectrum of the two neutrino double decay is a continuous one. And in the case of a neutral less double decay, so there's no anti-neutrino emitted. So the spectrum of the kinetic energy is a mono energy peak. So the energy resolution of a detector must be good enough to distinguish the two neutrino double decay and the zero neutrino double decay. Okay. So what happened? Okay, sorry. Okay, so uh, what we can learn from the neutrino less double beta decay. So uh, first, uh, uh, the uh, Dirac particle, I, I will talk about Dirac. So part in uh, the Dirac predict, he's the first one predicted the, the anti-particle and uh, in the model of Dirac. So uh, he said that the particle and anti-particle are different and uh, the neutrino and anti-neutrino should be different also. But there's also another uh, theory uh, suggested by Professor Mazarana, and uh, he suggests that the particle and anti-particle for the neutral particle uh, are the same. So that's why neutrino and anti-neutrino can be the same. So neutrino-less double decay occurs if the neutrino is a Mazarana particle. Uh, and uh, that's why if we can observe the neutrino-less double decay, 
so we can confirm the nature of neutrino. Is it a Mazarana or a rock particle? So the second one that is not allowed in the standard model of physics. So if we can observe it, we can explore a new physics. And last one is from the theory, the half-life of a neutrino less double decay, the inverse half-life, is proportional to the square of the effective neutrino mass. So we can determine the mass of neutrino by observing this decay. So then the candle experiment. Uh, so candle try to observe the neutrino less double beta decay of the calcium 48 isotope. So it's set up in Kamioka, so the same size as Super Kamioka. Uh, so candles consist of about 305 kilograms of calcium fluoride, so cubic crystal. So we use the crystal as scintillation detector and also as a source. So uh, and this crystal are submerged inside a two meter cube of a liquid scintillator to subtract the background. And there's 62 BMT surrounding them uh, to detect the scintillation photons. And uh, each BMT waveform is recorded by, by our electronic system. And everything is mounted inside a cylindrical water tank with a three meter in diameter, four meter in the height. And we also uh, install a passive shielding made from lead and boron uh, outside and inside the tank. So just a simple uh, illustration. So uh, when the electron deposits the energy in the calcium fluoride, uh, the scintillation photon, it will be emitted from the calcium fluoride. Uh, the photon are transparent in the liquid scintillator in the water, then it will be detected in the BMTs. So BMTs collect the photons and co convert them into the photoelectrons. So then at the end of the process, we have a signal. Then the signal it will be uh, transmitted to our electronic system uh, with many uh, flash analog to digital converters uh, to, to digitize the waveform. Then uh, the data uh, on waveform it will be recorded in our uh, computer. So uh, the scintillation photons uh, from the calcium fluoride are converted to the photoelectrons. So uh, in the ID resolution, it should be the statistical uh, fluctuation of a number of photoelectrons. So at the Q value, the energy, the ID resolution, the sigma PE, it's going to be about 1.6%. The current resolution uh, of candles is about 2.6% and it exceeds the ID resolution. So uh, it means that the order fluctuation uh, affect to the energy resolution. So in the case of candles, we use calcium fluoride and it has a long decay constant of one microsecond. So to calculate the energy by, we use a charge iteration within a long interval. So like this equation. So uh, it means that the fluctuation from the baseline, it can be accumulated in the charge iteration. And from our study, the baseline fluctuation is big, is about 1% at the Q value of calcium for hmm. Oops, Sorry, my, my, my laptop is quite... <laughs> okay, so uh, I, I told you that there's a baseline fluctuation in the calcium fluoride waveform, so uh, but to, to, to solve this problem, so there's one way is we can use a, a so-called method, the photon counting. Uh, so make a comparison between these two methods. So for the signal iteration, we have a big baseline fluctuation. Uh, and uh, currently we use the charge iteration to calculate the energy. And uh, the baseline fluctuation is accumulated. So in the case of photon counting, uh, the scintillation photon are converted to the photoelectron in the BMT. So we can set a threshold and we can count the number of photoelectrons in each BMT. So the energy it will be proportional to the number of photoelectrons counted in six two BMTs. And because there's no iteration, we're only counting. So there's no baseline fluctuation. So however, uh, photon counting is good, but however, when uh, there are many 1P signal pile up. They will form into a multi P signal. So like the, I show in, in, in this figure. So uh, in the case of 
there's two separate one p signal separated, so we, we can count very easily. But uh, in the case of uh, if there's uh, two one p signal pair up forming to two p signal, so this two p signal is still counted as one p, uh, and it resulted in the uh, wrong number of uh, photoelectrons. So we will miss the photoelectrons in counting, and it will result in a very bad energy resolution. So this uh, show the uh, energy histogram. So the blue one is the case of the current charge integration uh, that we use in candles. And uh, the uh, red one is the case of uh, uh, photon counting that we use. So the multi photoelectrons, uh, the 2P, 3P, SA, SA, uh, found mostly at the rising edge of the waveform. So uh, that's why I gonna introduce another method. The name is partial photon counting. So uh, in the partial photon counting, uh, in each binti, I will divide each binti waveform into areas. Uh, so the first area near the rising part of the uh, waveform, there are many multi p signal here. So I will make the charge interaction to avoid the loss of photoelectrons here. And in the second part, uh, there are not so many multi p signal, so I will carry out the photon counting to avoid the beta cell fluctuation, the baseline fluctuation. So uh, in my research, I have gonna fix the interval for charge interaction plus the interval for photon counting at 4,000 nanosecond. And I'm gonna check various combinations of the interval for charge interaction and photon counting to identify the best energy resolution. So this is an illustration for what I did. So the blue one here is a calcium fluoride waveform. So I reduce the uh, charge interaction interval, also mean that I increase the photon cutting interval. And uh, with different uh, combination of interaction and photon counting, I can obtain different energy histogram I show here. The blue one is the current uh, histogram constructed with the charge interaction. And the red one is constructed with uh, the partial photon counting method. Okay, so uh, from every energy histogram I observe, I gonna make a fitting. So this is the uh, fitting con consider all of the impurity that we uh, all of the background we can observe, uh, including the background from the thallium tetrate, background from the bismuth rate fourteen, background from the potassium 40 and also the error function as a compound background. So then after make the fitting, I can evaluate the energy resolution at the potassium 40 and the thallium to the ray peak. Then I can make the uh, energy resolution of these two peaks as a function of the signal interaction. So uh, as you see here, the, there's some improvement of the energy resolution here. So uh, the improvement here indicate that the baseline fluctuation is reduced. And uh, we also up, uh, obtain the worst energy resolution from this side. So it's because we lose the photoelectrons and we res it result in the worst energy resolution. So uh, as a result, the energy resolution at the potassium 40 is uh, improved from 4.5% to 4%. And the energy resolution of the thallium to the ray improved from 3.3% to 2.9%. So uh, this is the end of my talk. So in summary, the candle is searching for the neutrino last of bovine decay of calcium 8. Kivalry of this one is uh, 4.27 millitron volt at the Kamioka and the crown. And the resolution is important in studying the neutrino last of bovine decay for candles. Uh, and the current energy resolution uh, is 2.6%, is exceed the ideal resolution 1.6%. So because uh, we uh, have baseline fluctuation uh, in, in the charge interaction and it makes the resolution worse. So my research to go on to reduce the baseline fluctuation to improve the resolution of candles. So that's why I introduced a partial photon counting method. And uh, as a result, the uh, energy resolution of the potassium 40 and thallium to the rate are improved. And expectedly, the energy resolution at the Q value of calcium 8 
uh, must be improved. Okay, so oh. uh, this is the end of my presentation. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Kai. Uh, so we open for the question. Is there any question? Mm. Okay, go back. Okay, Kai, maybe I can ask one. Uh, so another uh, related to the accumulation of pedestal fluctuation, it maybe come from the fact that scintillation decay is about four microsecond. It's really long. So is there any uh, scintillator crystal can have shorter decay time? Oh, as I know that uh, it can be like so so like the same, but um, the important that when we choose the calcium fluoride, so uh, because in the future of candles, we gonna try to introduce the bolometer scintillator detector. So and uh, so far by the experiment, the calcium fluoride can can be, you know, developed to be a scintillation bolometer detector with very good energy resolution. So that's what the motivation that we want to keep using this. This crystal. Mm, I see. Uh, I didn't see any more question. So I okay. So one more thing, I also confused. When you say the photon counting, it not really include the baseline fluctuation. It not really maybe not really true because that it taking in a cow when you set the threshold to count the photoelectron, right? Uh, yeah, uh, the, yeah, the, there's some fluctuation, yeah, you're right, there's some, will be some, how to say, uncertainty in, in the threshold setting, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, but uh, it also very, uh, you know, widely used technique for all the longer, um, decay constant crystal, like the calcium constant. Uh, so, but I think the fluctuation uh, of the threshold will not really affect it much on the counting efficiency. Yeah. Uh, okay, so mm, for example, did you try to study, for, for example, it changed the threshold? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this one is somehow a little bit optimized threshold. The, the threshold that, that I set is somehow a little bit optimized. So I, I change from the baseline and increase a little bit, a little bit, a little bit until I can get the, how to say, good separation between the baseline and the signal and also not losing so many photoelectron. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, thank you. Uh, I didn't see any more question. Okay, so thank you very much, Kai. And we conclude the section today. Um, if you have any question or to speaker, and then we will welcome you to ask the question on the Slack. If you want to ask to any specific uh, speaker, I can pass the question to the speaker and return to you. Okay, thank you very much for uh, all our contribution and thank you very much and uh, we thank you conclude very much. Uh, See you. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you very thank much. You bye. And bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye, Professor. Thank you, Professor. Yeah, okay, bye bye. bye, -bye. Hope to see you again sometime. Yeah, yeah. Chào Khải nhé. Cảm ơn chị. Yeah.